Hello, welcome to the Wednesday, August 25th, 2021 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and today I'm recording from Stockheim, Germany, but teaching virtually in London, England. In our honeypots, I recently saw an uptick in requests for a file called twilio.env. Now, this really sort of continues a trend that we have seen over really the last couple of years, where more and more of the requests are looking for these environment files. What happens here is that developers will use environment variables to store credentials. And overall, this isn't really such a terrible, bad idea idea, but of course you first have to initialize those environment variable. In some cases you may do that via a web server configuration, but if you need the same environment variables from a web server, but also from other scripts that are connecting to the same account, it may make sense to have a little script, a little file that just initializes these variables. However, you have to make sure that the file is outside your document root, so it cannot be accessed directly with a browser or by an attacker just attempting to download the particular URL. Twilio actually recommends as part of its uh, documentation to use such an environment file. They're not really talking much about how to protect the file once you have it. The same attacker that looked for the twilio.env file also looked for files .env .dev .env prod and .env.stage, kind of suggesting that they're trying to find uh, different versions of these environment files for development, production, and staging environments. In addition to keeping these files outside the document route, it may be a good sort of secondary security measure to also block access to these files in your web server configuration in case something gets mixed up and one of these files ends up in your document root. You, of course, also should not check those files into Git and uh, add them to your Git ignore and keep them separately like all credentials. And Kaspersky is reporting that they found a version of WhatsApp that's being distributed that includes the Triada Trojan. One thing with WhatsApp is that there is a relatively lively marketplace of modified WhatsApp versions that advertise various additional features. Often, of course, this comes with some advertisements or such in order for the developer to monetize some of their effort here. But in this case, an outright Trojan was added in addition to some unspecified additional features. The malware itself does collect information about the user's device, sends it to a command control server, and then retrieves additional components. Some of them, again, are all about displaying ads, but a few or at least one of the components that Kaspersky observed does sign up the user for paid subscription. And this version of WhatsApp will also request permissions to access SMS messages. With that, of course, it would be able to read and send SMS messages to, for example, intercept two-factor authentication tokens. And remember, yesterday I mentioned the case of a Razer mice and how drivers that are being downloaded once you plug in one of these mice can be used for simple privilege escalation. Well, it uh, looks like other security researchers have been inspired by this article and Lawrence Amer uh, did find an interesting issue that's very similar uh, to this that actually doesn't require to plug in a device. The SteelSeries keyboards come with an installer that runs as system. And again, that's a common theme here because to install, you need system, but uh, these uh, installers often prematurely uh, escalate uh, to a system. And in this case, it's then possible to launch Internet Explorer as system by clicking on a link in the installer. And that's really only then one little step away from a system shell on the affected system. So common theme here is in order to install these drivers or software, you often do need a system process. If 
installers aren't careful when they escalate and how they escalate, then of course an attacker can easily piggyback on the installer process and escalate privileges for arbitrary commands. And well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.